Welcome to Radiant Pearls Ministries. I'm Justina Sanchez. And I'm Jeanette Bradley. Today we are so excited to welcome our wonderful friend and sister, Dee Dee Whitley. Yay! I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for willing to be here with us today. So around here, we have a bit of a sweet tooth. So we would like to know, what is your favorite dessert? Oh, I meant to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love carrot cake. Mm. That was... Um, kind of like a childhood favorite, but now it's like I'm known for making carrot cake. Mm. So it's kind of lost a little of its excitement for me, but I, I'll still say that's my number one. I love a good <laughs> piece of carrot cake. Yes. And, and we would be very excited if you wanted to make some and bring it here. Oh. Um, there would, there would be we no loss it, of it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> Will you tell us about yourself? Yes. Well, I am excited to be here to talk about motherhood. I am married to a pastor, my husband, Micah Whitley, and I have four children, ages 15, 14, 13, and 11 and a half. Wow. So we knock it all out in four <laughs> years, you know. And um, we've been married 19 years. Next month is our anniversary. Um, I'm also a homeschool mom. So that takes up a lot of my time. And in addition to that, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. So I do a little bit of, you know, of that on the side. Um, I really, it's on the side because of the kids. And, and I really feel like um, this season is going to be gone. And I'll always be able to go back and work as a doctor, but I won't be able to go back and re-homeschool my kids. So uh, that's number one. And then I'm a worship leader. Um, so, yeah, a lot of hats. Yes, absolutely, and definitely. An, and an amazing doctor. You're my doctor as well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. We know that you're also involved in Love Movement Ministries. And yes. we've had uh, Ms. Kelsey Dillon on here a few weeks ago. And would you tell us what other ministries you're a part of? You're involved yes, in? well, in Love Movement, you know, we're really passionate about worship. And so, I'm, you know, lead worship with that, but also um, at church. And um, through, I told you already, I'm a homeschool mom. And a few years back, uh, my friend and I, we started a co-op. And we just found so much encouragement, like talking to each other about our problems and uh, helping each other along the journey. And so we started a YouTube channel called Chips and Salsa Homeschooling, where we talk about um, homeschooling tips and ideas, but also encouraging moms and encouraging families because, you know, it's a hard journey. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do that. And, um, and I'm uh, one of the pastoral team members. I'm in the training right now, pastoral support team. So I do that at church as well. Just one other thing that you do yeah. in your spare time. <laughs> I love your, your Chips and Salsa homeschooling ministry. Mm -hmm. I myself, like many other moms right now, I'm sure have found themselves having to homeschool. So I have really turned to you guys and get some great ideas and tips and encouragement and inspiration. And we appreciate you for all that you guys put out there with that. Oh, thank you so much. I love hearing that. That's awesome. And we subscribe to your YouTube channel, Chips thank and you. Salsa, as well. So when I was praying about you coming on, I was so excited. And what the words that I heard was kingdom kids. Mm. So tell us, what is your approach to raising kingdom kids? All right. Well, I have a few notes. <laughs> I'm going to open my notes. Um, well, I love Proverbs 22, 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I feel like that speaks not, it's not like a recipe, mm -hmm. but it gives me hope but also gives me instruction that there's training that needs to take place. And um, around my house, training means uh, working out. <laughs> so my husband has been training for over 40 years. And so there you go. That tells you right there, train, you never get trained when it comes to fitness, right? You're constantly training. You're constantly growing. There's, there's new goals and new things to happen. I feel like that verse is telling us, uh, show them how to be trained by the Lord, because eventually I'm going to be the secondary and Holy Spirit needs to be their primary 
trainer. Right. And so leading them to the Lord. And um, so ways that we're doing that with our kids is number one, we have family prayer and worship times and, and really bringing them along in our kingdom journey. So, you know, we're prophesying over people or we're laying hands on the sick. They're doing it alongside us. Mm. Um, but then we have prayer and worship times, you know, as a family, we have Bible um, time as a family, which now that they're teenagers, it ta- it's harder to get everybody to focus because my husband and my kids will just go on these fun story times <laughs> well they'll just joke and joke and i'm like okay let's get back to the scripture you know they'll get one scripture and it will turn into a whole joke uh, but it's fun it's yeah it's just so fun um and i feel like holy spirit has really shown like shown me three areas to really hone in on our training and the number one is modeling behavior everything that we do is what they're learning what they're going to do and and no matter what your words say, who you are is what is learned. Right. And, um, and so I feel like um, the, the thing that came to my mind is Holy Spirit, we're still growing. So as Holy Spirit grows and corrects me and, and shapes me, then I'm a letting the kids see that. Mm-hmm. I'm letting them see that I am also a child of God and being molded and shaped. That's so and, good. Um, that is. I know, I know for myself personally with my daughter, um, the things that I do and the way that I live my life speak louder than mm-hmm. the words that I, I talk to her, that I try to tell her, you know, how to live life. But it's, it's me modeling that yeah. she picks up on and she remembers. And I see her walk that out and it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we're showing them how to be Christians, right? Kindness Mm -hmm. and love, but we're also showing them that we can be corrected, that we are humans. Right, we need to apologize when we make mistakes because we do. And that's my number two thing (laughs) is apologize to the kids. And and so, yeah, it goes along with modeling and humility, modeling, um, letting them see us. And I, I have a scripture here, Proverbs 12, 18 says, there's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Mm. And I did not learn healthy communication skills growing up. I feel like growing up, I didn't feel freedom to really express how I felt about things or um, my needs about certain things. And so that has been really important to me because I feel like when they see that I'm okay saying I messed up and I apologize, they see that I also need Jesus just like they do, but also that they can be vulnerable with me. And, and I'm starting to see that it really pay off, like them coming to me and us being able to have heart to heart conversations. And of course, each season of Parenthood, you know, has its joys and its ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Uh, parenting teenagers, as you you know, <laughs> is a lot more about the emotions and about the, you know, conflict, relationships, that kind of thing, uh, versus when they're small, it's a lot more, you know, tangible things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been really great. And just be having that line of communication open. And then my third thing was, Uh, training them in being forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, one of the things that came to my mind and my heart was that I've needed to forgive my parents Mm -hmm. for a lot of things and not taking the baggage of my childhood into my parenting, Um, but also forgiving my husband on a regular basis because I always want him to be uplifted to the children and in their eyes. And if I'm holding negativity towards him, I know that it's being reflected, even if I'm trying not to. Uh, Forgiving myself and then making sure my kids feel forgiven right away because uh, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And to understand the grace of God through that and the mercy of God through that. I heard uh, Josh McDowell, I read in his, on a book of his years ago, where he said, if a mental patient or mentally ill patients would be able to be released from institutions and 
he said like the majority of them, if they only could grasp that they were forgiven. That really stuck with me, mm -hmm. how powerful it is to be forgiven and to understand that you're, you don't have to pay for every wrong that you've done. And of course, that's the grace of God, and that's mm -hmm. Jesus, right? And we don't have that outside of him. But um, those are just some of the things that I feel like, as we're training them, that that's developing them into kingdom ambassadors, that they're going to be able to be, part of being a kingdom you know, kid is being free to uh, express your love for the Lord, mm -hmm. being free to lay hands on the sick, you know, with confidence that God is, he, he hears your prayers, that God is with you. And um, so really, you know, create an environment for that with our kids and allowing them to mess up and then start over. <laughs> yeah, I love what you said mm -hmm. about feeling forgiven. Oftentimes we focus on the forgiveness aspect of it and knowing that a lot of what we do and the way that people interact with each other and the actions that are done are rooted in unforgiveness. But I've never really took the time to think the opposite side of making sure that they feel forgiven. Yeah. And so thank you for bringing light to that. That's huge. Awesome. That's really good. And I also love what you said about forgiving yourself because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're called to forgive, right? So we're called to forgive our husbands, our children, mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. And a lot of times we stop at forgiving ourselves and that's huge because if you don't forgive yourself, then you're not going to have that love and that freedom. It's like you're, like you're um, in prison still mm -hmm. and you're not gonna be able to completely show that to everybody else. That was such great advice. Well, and we talk about, you know, that we're modeling, mm -hmm. right? Everything that we model mm -hmm. is what the kids are learning. And yeah. we will communicate way more uh, unspoken, right? Yeah. So even if we don't think they know, they know. <laughs> they know, they know that we're holding stuff against ourselves or we have this, and, and that's, you know, telling them the opposite of what we're trying to Exactly. And they know it as teenagers, but they know it as small children too. Mm -hmm. They know it. Mm -hmm. They may not always know what they're feeling, but they're feeling it. Yeah. And then they begin to understand it and then they start copying what was modeled for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So raising your children and, and this model that you've kind of put together for us is, um, is wonderful. On the flip side of that, what are some challenges that you have faced uh, when trying to raise kingdom kids? Well, okay, so this is my, my motto. I don't know, I'm working on it, but tell me what you think. <laughs> Being a mom is hard work, but it's rewarding work because you've been anointed for motherhood. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. So I'm, you know, it's thinking about being a mom is like the toughest job ever. And right when you kind of get the handle on it, everything changes. Yep. Like the kids get older and then whatever you did last year doesn't work anymore. And especially homeschooling, right? It's like, okay, yeah, I'm a homeschool mom. Oh, now we have junior high. Oh, now high school. Like, and then it's over. And you're like, oh, okay. Like right when I was getting good at it, now I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> so, so I think, that's a huge challenge. Like right. this is a job that does not stay the same. Like it's always changing. It's, yes. it's always evolving. Yeah. That's right. And I just, we want to remind you that you have been fully equipped and anointed to parent the children that the Lord has entrusted with you. Mm -hmm. And don't get discouraged because even though it's constantly changing, stay the course because you're investing not just for today, but your children's future, mm -hmm. their children and their children and okay. their children. Everything you do today is making an impact for generations. So keep up the good work. Amen. And then, you know, I just see motherhood as like this amazing gift that's purging me and shaping me <laughs> and training me. And so I have this declaration that I say, I am a joyful mother of children. And it's from Psalm 113. And uh, the reason I have to say this declaration is because there was the season where I had this thought that kept reoccurring. I hate kids. 
I hate kids. And I'm like, wait a minute, that is not my thought. But I know enough about thoughts that I know that I can combat the thought. And so I began to do the declaration, I'm a joyful mother of children. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have the ability to believe the lies of the enemy, but we also have the ability to speak the truth and combat those lies. And so I love declarations, daily declarations, because as you declare the truth, as you declare God's word over your life and over your family, it impacts the words that come out of your mouth when you're not being intentional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. I, my daughter and I do declarations regularly, and there is actual scientific evidence that as you are speaking these declarations over yourself daily, you are literally creating new neurological pathways mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. So the things you sh say, the things you think about yourself, you're literally shifting that by saying daily declarations to come into agreement with what the Lord says about you. Yes. So like just yesterday in my prayer time, I had to repent to the Lord about a declaration I had been saying over one of my sons. And my, I was basically saying, he's um, passionate right now about socializing. <laughs> and I'm looking for him to be passionate about more than that. And so as I was praying for him, I just felt, a little, you know, correction in my spirit that, no, I need to be speaking life over him. It, it's okay that he loves socializing, but I need to be declaring something more positive. And so, you know, it's a constant thing. <laughs> yeah, my declaration for a long time was parenting is no joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the hardest job I ever had. But there's so much reward for doing it as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, my scripture um, for uh, chips and salsa and for parenting is Psalm 123. Uh, one, sorry, 127, verse 3. Uh, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And um, I, I feel like um, you, you know, you see the joy in um people as they post pictures of their kids, just going over Instagram this morning. I was looking at my friends posting pictures of their kids for Thanksgiving. And there's just such a joy in seeing your kids happy, seeing them uh, prosper. Um, but also there's a supernatural joy that I feel like comes with motherhood. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that that's a sense that there's a holy calling, that you're partnering with the Lord. Right. And so um, I just brought me to this scripture in John um, chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, where it says, As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Man, that is powerful. Mm -hmm. That each one of us is not born by the will of man, mm -hmm. but we are chosen by God. So you're not a mother by accident. Right. God has called and chosen those children. And so um, when we seek advice and guidance from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, we're going directly to the source. And he wants our kids to be uh, led and shepherded and guided even more than we do. Right. So um, I think uh, when I say anointed for motherhood, it's really about God wants me to be good at it. Right, <laughs> right. So he wants to equip me and give me the answers, mm -hmm. right, that I need. But yeah. he, he does that when we go to him. Yes. And when we partner with him is the key. Yep. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And I know sometimes we feel overwhelmed with motherhood at times, especially in this season. And so it's so important that you know you're, you were called to motherhood and the Lord has given you everything and will continue to provide all that you need to raise your children in every season of life. Yeah. Amen. And so um, what I was thinking about being called to motherhood and anointed, um, and I don't think we really use that word a lot, you know, in our uh, modern uh, society. But anointed means that you are uh, given um, an anointing for a position. And in the Bible, in 1 Samuel, we see 
the prophet going and anointing King or Saul to be king. And then a few chapters later, he anoints David to be king. Mm -hmm. And neither of them wanted or were looking to be king. Okay. So if you weren't looking to be a mom, but you are now, <laughs> it's okay because the anointing, the anointed are equipped to that calling. And so I want to read a couple of scriptures from 1 Samuel 16. So um, in verse 3, he says, uh, Samuel is getting the word from the Lord. And he says, uh, you shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So he didn't even know who he was going to talk to. But, you know, and David's not even there. He's out in the field. He's got to bring him in. He, and um, then in verse 13, he says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. I love that so much. And in my commentary, it says from that moment, God begins to equip David and direct the details of his life. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, Jeanette, when we go to the Lord, he's more than willing to equip us and lead us and guide us as, um, as parents, as mothers. Um, let's see where I was at. Oh, and so in, also in the New Testament, we see anointing. In 2 Corinthians 1, 20, and I'm going to just paraphrase this one. Um, he says, all the promises of God are yes and amen. And then it talks about you are established, anointed, and sealed with his spirit. Oh, mm. that is so good. That is so good. And in 1 John 1, it says, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Mm. So his anointing comes with the equipping. It comes with, and um, in our like modern language, we say there's like a motherly instinct. Mm -hmm. I think that's from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that are just instinctual, right? That everybody's going to gonna have mm -hmm. and most of us tap into it when we're pregnant you know or waiting even if you're adopting a kid there's an anticipation there's that waiting time where we go into nesting and you know preparations for the baby um, but then there are some things we need to press in and go to the Lord for those answers and for that equipping and that's where we need the Holy Spirit and I I, I don't I don't know how that we could mother without Holy Spirit mm, exactly. leading us mm. and guiding us. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when we're talking about raising up kingdom kids. Right. You know, that you are um getting insight from the Holy Spirit about what's going on mm -hmm. because so many things can be missed with our own natural thinking. And just this morning I was reading in Matthew, I think it was um chapter 16, where Jesus is rebuking Peter. And he's like, get behind me, Satan, you know, because Peter's thinking in the natural. Jesus, no, you can't go to the cross. But Jesus, he didn't need Peter cutting off people's ears and all that. He needed him to pray. And I love that you got this. My secret is simple. I pray. That prayer is so important. And I love telling this story about my mother-in-law. Uh, she raised six kids on 47th and Logan. Mm. I mean, and if you don't know where that is, it's in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of gang violence going on during that time. Um, uh, none of her kids got into gangs. None of them went to jail or got on drugs, three boys, three girls. And we were talking, I was a young mom, and she's like, honey, I prayed for my children. And she just told me about the hour she spent on her knees crying out to the Lord. And she told me, you won't be able to say that unless you pray. Mm -hmm. And that, man, that pierced my heart. I, de I determined in my heart that day that I was going to be a praying mom. Because I don't want to get to the end of this chapter and say, oh, I wish I had prayed more, yeah. you know, and um, just quickly tell you one story about my 
one of my sons, about three or four years old, I felt like he was really skeptical about the things of God. And it was really troubled me, some of the questions and comments that he was making. And so I decided I'm going to spend this whole year just praying about that. That I, I don't even remember if we ever had any like talks about faith or anything like that, but I just prayed and it was just a focus. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the year, when I'm journaling again, you know, at the end of the year, I really saw a shift mm -hmm. only from prayer. And so I know that prayer is powerful and we must, must pray for our children. Absolutely. That makes all the difference. I just want to say what you said again, because I feel like it's so important when you're talking about the scripture that says that he lets us know all things. And so some of that will happen through nesting motherhood and our intuition, um, which really is Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But those things that you're just not sure about, press in, pray partner with the Lord, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, because he wants to help you. But he's not one who's going to force himself on us because he's, he's a kind, gentle, loving God. And he'll come in where he's asked, invited, and welcomed. So I just wanted to, to reiterate that because it was such a good word. Yeah. Amen. So will you leave us with another encouraging word for our moms? Yes. I would just say, be gracious with yourself that we're all learning. And in this season, I've had a couple of opportunities to have only two kids at home. <laughs> two kids is easier than four. Yes. And I bet four kids is easier than six. Yes. <laughs> yes. So be gracious with yourself as you're learning. And, and then if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, if you seek, you will find. So I would say, go to the scriptures, seek, more of the Lord. Seek his a relationship with Holy Spirit because he wants to lead you and guide you. Yes. That's so good. That's so good. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Mm -hmm. Would you let our audience know where they can find you? Yes, I am on Facebook and Instagram, Chips and Salsa Homeschooling, and as well as my own personal page, Dee Dee Whitley. It was such a blessing and honor to have you here today. I feel like this just barely scrapes uh, the, the top, the tip of your wisdom. And uh, so we're hoping to hear from you again. Yeah, thank you. thank you. This was such an honor. Thank you for sharing with us and our audience. And uh, we want to remind you, you can find us on RadiantPearlsMinistries.com, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Parlor. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, you have strength, you have hope, and you have loveliness. We'll see you next time.